Let's look at applying color to MFC Interface C Dialog Windows. First, let's take a look at OnWMC Tail Color. OnWMC Tail Color is a special MFC message ID that is placed between MFC message map tags. When it is transmitted, it calls the message handler function on CTL color, which can apply color through CBrush objects to a window and its components. For example, here are some message map tags for a C dialog object, and I've added on WMCTL color so it will listen for color change information. Here I have a, just a small RPG project, and in this case, you can see the message map tags begin message map and end message map. And here is what I need for coloring the interface. I just have to add on WMCTL color into those message map tags. And if you have more than one dialog, just make sure that you add it into the message map tags for the right dialog that you want to set colors on. And here's what it looks like if we run it. In this case, these are the text colors, and we'll bring up some text there. Once we've added the message ID on WMCTL color to the message map tags, it calls the message handler function on CTL color. Here is an example of the function signature. It returns an HBrush object and accepts three arguments a pointer to the device context, a pointer to the component, and a special symbolic constant indicating which component you want to color. Here's an example of our message handler function on CTL color. Notice for our arguments, we take a pointer to the device context, a pointer to the component, and one of the symbolic constants represented by NCTL color. In the switch statement, look at NCTL color. All the symbolic constants are there for buttons, list boxes, message boxes, scroll bars, edit controls, static controls, and the dialog itself. Look at the methods, set text color, set background color. They take RGB values, and look at set background mode, which you can set to transparent. Notice the case for CTL color dialog returns, in this case, a CBrush object that was declared in globals and then created inside of on and dialog with a create solid brush. Look at the default, in this case it's calling the parent objects on CTL color and passing in the arguments. So to continue making the point, here in Visual Studio in the message map tags for my C dialog object, Drifter's main window, sort of the main window, I've added, in this case, on WMC tail color. It's in the message map tags, and when that message ID is heard, it triggers the message handler function. So if I come up here, let me go up here and we'll get to on CTL color. Here's our arguments and here's all of the symbolic constants represented by NCTL color. So I could set colors on any one of these. I'm only using you know ones for the edit and static controls in this case. And I'm you know commented these out. I'm not really using those. This is a C brush object, okay? And you know as far as painting you know different components on the C dialog I had to declare that, so in my globals header file, here's my CBrush object brush main. And then before I use it, in on init dialog, I call a method called, in this case, configure interface. And in configure interface, I turn around and I call it, let me close this here so you can see more. I turn around and call a method set up fonts and colors. And I just want to make sure that I have to create the brush first before I can use it to paint with. So I'm calling the method create solid brush passing in an RGB value, and then here in on CTL color, I'm returning that brush to paint on the C dialog object itself. And then in this case, the default is to simply return the parent classes or base classes on CTL color method, passing in the arguments or attributes. Now, in this case, if you look at the RGB values for the brush, when I create solid brush, 255, 255, 255 for red, green, and blue basically equate to white. So when I return this object up here, I'm painting my background. And that's the background color of the dialog ob object itself. And again, if you take a look at it, here's what it looks like. There's the color scheme. Once again, let's review those arguments. First, we have a pointer to the device context, in this case represented by X. Second, we have a pointer to the control asking for color information, in this case represented by Y. And finally, we have a symbolic constant represented by NCTL color which specifies the MFC component we want to set colors for. Next, let's take a look at MFC CBrush objects. CBrush objects can be used to set fill and draw colors in an MFC application. For example, here I've declared a CBrush object called brush main in globals. Then later on, inside the dialog code, main CPP, 
inside the oninit dialog method, I've used the function or method create solid brush and passed in an RGB value to instantiate that ZBrush object and give it a color. And again, over here on my project, inside the globals header file, I've declared a ZBrush object on the stack. And an oninit dialog, which remember is called automatically whenever you load a dialog. In this case, I have another function I call called configure interface and set up interface pointers. And I just want to make sure that anything that I'm going to try to, you know, set colors or fonts on, I've set up with get dialog item, and I've done that. Come down here and configure interface. I call another method called setup fonts and colors, and I want to make sure that I create the brush. So I declared it here, all right, in globals. But now I need to call the method create solid brush and pass in an RGB color value. And now I'm ready to start painting things with it. Next, let's take a look at C font objects. C font objects can be used to modify the font properties of MFCC dialog components. For example, here under globals, I've declared a pointer to a C edit class object, P output. I've also declared a C font object, font big, on the stack. Now, later on inside of main CPP, the main source file for my C dialog class, uh, in the on init dialog method, I need to set that pointer up to point to a resource file object first using get dialog item. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the pointer p output. I'm setting it up with get dialog item to the resource file ID, which is c underscore output, and I have to cast it to the right data type. In this case, a c edit control. Now I can set colors and fonts on it once I've done that. If you didn't do that first and you tried to set a font or a color on something, you'd get a null pointer exception and it would crash. Now that I have this global c font on the stack font big, I need to call the method create point font. And in this case, I'm going to give it the Comic Sans MS font value and set the point size at 105. Once I do that, I then need to create a pointer to a C font object and pass in the address of the font object, the global, that I built on the stack. Finally, I can then use the method set font and set the font on the C edit control. Here again, inside of globals, we've declared two C font objects, in this case on the stack. And these globals, um, before we can do anything to them, we need to make sure that we initialize things properly. So inside of oninit dialog, which if you remember is called automatically when you build a dialog from C1 app, I've called a couple of methods here. Setup interface pointers and configure interface. Setup interface pointers takes care of using get dialog item to associate all of the pointers to different classes of objects to their right resource file object. If I didn't do that first and I tried to set the font on one of these items, I would get a null pointer exception and it would crash. After I've done that, I then call configure interface and set up fonts and colors. And then once I get into set up fonts and colors, I can take my global. In this case, let's use the example font big. All right, so font big, I'm going to call the method create point font. And I'll create a 105 point font with its comic sans ms. After I do that, what I need to do next is take my object, in this case on the stack. So I have to use the address of operator, pass it into a pointer to a C font object. And then once I do that, I can call the method or function set font on any of my MFC components on my C dialog and set the font or change the font accordingly. So let's take a look at that and again we'll see how it looks. Here's Comic Sans MS here and then other fonts I have like Trebuchet MS and Arial up here. So if I were to start it, I'll just show you the text output. Alright, so you can see there's comic sans MS. There must be some way out of here. Said the Joker to the thief. There's too much confusion. I can't get no relief. Businessmen, they drink my wine. Flamen, dig my earth. 